Okay guys, today we're going to be taking a look at what I carry for survival training and survival teaching. Let's jump into it. Okay, so a while back, about last year, I did a video talking about what I really carry for a lightweight, minimalistic styled bushcrafting setup. And so I thought today... So I thought this year I would talk about what I carry for survival training as I do a lot more of it in the as I've been doing a lot more of it this year and I have a pretty good setup. Now also in addition I'll be showing you what I include when I do survival training. So let's jump into the kit that I carry and why. So for my what I carry for survival training, you guys are basically looking at most of it and essentially the primary thing when it comes down to survival training, in my mind and in my opinion, is it's all about options. I could do a survival outing with any one of these particular tools, the knife, the hatchet, the saw, just by itself. However, when I come out, especially to do training and teaching, I like... I like to test my skills on multiple different tools and across multiple different options. Really seeing, you know, if this is what I have, this is what I can use to do with it. I can do this, that, and the other, and just test my skills with all of the above. <clears throat> I also like to do that, and I like to have all of these options so that I can properly share with people when I'm teaching them survival skills, how to utilize different tools, and what they can do with those tools to affect survival out in the woods. If they only have a knife, if they only have a hatchet, if they only have a saw, or if they have all three, or some combination of each. So, I like to have options because the options allow me to bring in more points in the wilderness and show people how to utilize the wilderness and how they can make it work for them in a survival situation. So that's the first point that I wanted to bring up when it comes to the tools and really my mindset behind survival. It's really all about options and how you can use many different things to affect survival. Survival, unlike bushcraft, is not a very picky or very selective mode of living. It's just scratching out an existence with whatever you have. And so that's why I have multiple tool options and multiple things on the table or on the ground floor to show you guys. So now let's jump into each thing. So before we get too much into it, obviously for survival, I always carry a fail safe. Even when I'm bushcrafting, this is my fail safe here. And this is my personal survival kit. I have another video detailing this kit particularly or in particular, but this essentially has all my survival equipment from basic first aid to the personal locator beacon on the bottom, you know, just whatever type of thing may happen or whatever goes wrong. It's nice to have a true fail safe that you can deploy if your survival training gets a little bit too real. <laughs> So this is my personal survival kit, and like I said, it's not so much for the training, it's more just to have as a backup and to utilize if I need to. <clears throat> so next to that, I also carry a GPS. Now this is, once again, kind of for survival and keeping myself from a real survival situation while practicing out in the woods. And in here I have an Organ 650T. I like to carry this because, like I said, not only is it a partial fail-safe, but also it's really great for mapping out places. I go to a lot of new wilderness, and it's not that I can't navigate the trails or find places, but there's a lot of times where I'll find particular areas where I like to film or come back to, and it's nice to have a GPS to just pinpoint those places so that I know how to find them again when I want to. So all this system is, it looks much bigger than it really is, but it's just the Organ 650T and some spare batteries in this little compartment. <clears throat> so then and next, moving over to the tools, the, tr the true parts of the survival training. So everything else is kind of ancillary, but essentially for tools, I carry a Baco Laplander for a saw, and to practice you know, using this as a piece of survival equipment. Then next to that, I carry the Holtzbruch 
uh, all mic and I carry a small hatchet like this to once again practice with it. I can also vary between the all mic and the Grim Forest Brooks Scandinavian Forest Axe. In the winter I'm far more likely to carry the Scandi Forest Axe just because hatchets in the winter are a little bit underpowered but especially in the fall, in the spring, and in the summer these are really handy. You can do a great deal of fire uh, tinder and firewood collection with a hatchet, so it's great to practice and use one. Then lastly is a good survival knife. Now once again I've talked about these tools before, but I carry the CRK Pacific and I will vary between the CRK Pacific, the Cold Steel SRK, and sometimes I will go into some bushcrafting knives like my uh, Bark River Knives Bushcrafter or LT Wright Legome, but I try to stay more over into bigger survival knives for survival practice just because I tend to, when I do survival practice and teach people survival, I try to introduce them to the sin of batoning, and so it's nicer to have a large knife like this because I don't always know what type of wood I'll be working with. So if you have a bigger knife that can just span, you know, a much or just about any piece of realistically sized wood that you'll come into contact with, um, this is a really great option to use for that. So either the SRK or the Pacific are my go-tos, but sometimes I will use the LT Wright Legome or the BRK Bushcrafter, depending on what I have in my truck and depending on what I feel like using. That is the knife that I go with, or the knives I go with. So these two over here are more dedicated to when I'm teaching survival as opposed to actually using these in survival. I don't tend to carry these too much. However, in a lot of expedited times when I only have like a few hours to teach someone, let's say firecrafting, I like to bring these two along because I can share with people the natural resources that are around without necessarily having to go through the process of collecting them. And I can share with people how to start fires with these different things. So in here, this is a pretty basic traditional fire starting kit. I have right in here, um, this is aspen inner bark. So a very common tree here in Alaska is aspen. And you can take the inner bark and make fibrous cordage or you know, uh, fire starting materials with it. Then I have some pieces of chaga in here to show them chaga. And then I have a flint and steel kit in here. And of course I have a fire piston here. So I like to keep this uh, on, like in my back pocket, so to speak, so that I can share with people different uh, fire starting materials and resources. Because oftentimes in an expedited course or an expedited, you know, just few hours spending with people, I will just go over, you know, primarily birch bark because birch bark is a go-to. It's readily available here, but there are certainly a lot of other options in Alaska for starting fires. So I'd like to have that kit. And of course, this kit is very similar in how I have it stocked. It's just once again, you know, has a whole bunch of natural um, materials from amadou, birch bark, um, <clears throat> chaga in all kinds of natural materials that are in there that I can show to people and be like and help explain to them and show them what real tenders look like so that if they are so that if they are in survival situations they know what to look for and they know what to look out and see and know what they can use for survival because a lot of times in survival, materials are the biggest factor. If you know what materials to look for, then you can better utilize your surroundings for your life or your survival. So anyways, those are primarily educational things. I don't really bring them out when I personally practice survival because I know what to look for. I've obviously, uh, you know, stuffed both of these myself with materials that I found. So. I know what to look for and I, I definitely know what to see. But once again, for those who are amateurs or who are new to survival, they may not know necessarily what to look for. So anyways, guys, that is what I carry for survival. It's very pared down and I do that for a reason because I don't want to give myself too many breaks and make it too easy, but I want to have the necessary tools to give myself options, whether I'm teaching or whether I'm training and I want to be able to practice with multiple tools to keep my skills sharp with all of the above. So as always guys, God bless and I'm out.